was when he said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? See, the earth went dark. And I truly believe the reason why the earth went dark is because God turned his face. Because God's holy. I mean, that is just, I mean, the end of story. God is holy. As much as he loves you, he will not be joined to sin because he has to remain holy. So God loves you. But even Jesus, when all the sin was put upon him on the cross, he turned his face. So much so that Jesus said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I mean, he was prepared to go through the death of a cross. But the worst part of it, I mean, now think about what he went through. He was, he was beaten, 39 lashes with a cat of nine tails, which is like a, a, a leather whip with metal pieces and shard glass that ripped through his body. He went through that. He, he had the crown of thorns beat into his head and laughed and mocked at, and they even played a game in the Antonia, because I've, I've been to Israel and I saw that they played some kind of sick game with him. And, and they nailed him to the cross, and he suffered there with all that pain. I mean, he was beaten to where he wasn't even recognizable. And none of that meant anything to him but that one part where he said, My God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? Because Jesus knew something. He was with his father from the time that he was born until the time he died. He was holding his hand. It did not matter to him what he experienced. It did not matter what came at him. He was still holding the father's hand. And I think that's precious. And Joseph, somehow he knew that. He had integrity how easy it would have been for him to accept that invitation. His integrity, he knew, meant authority equals responsibility. Luke 12:48 says, To whom much is given, much is required. So Joseph knew one little one-night stand, even if nobody saw it, God saw it. And it would have been all over with. Remember? Mm -hmm. He was on the cross, and he didn't plan for the separation. You know, <laughs> he didn't like that feeling because the earth went dark three hours before he died, and he knew that that was God turning his face. And and because God is so holy, he cannot look upon sin. He had to turn away, and I thank God that He is holy like that. But He He turned away from His own Son, and Jesus said, "My." my why have you forsaken me? And that, that's intense. Because he knew he was with him at all times, except that one moment when he was on the cross right there. Just that one moment. But see, Joseph went through all this, and he knew that God had not left him. That's how we can do it. That's how you can swallow a bitter pill and do it gracefully. Just because something bad happens to you doesn't mean you have to be bitter from it. You can be better. I'm living proof of that. So let's go 739. Well, before that, it says, Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. It came about after these events that his master's wife looked with desire at Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. Hmm. She didn't beat around the bush, did she? But he refused and said to his master's wife, Behold with me here. My master does not concern himself with anything in the house, and he has put all that he owns in my charge. There is no one greater in this house than me, and he has withheld nothing from me except you because you're his wife. How then could I do this great evil and sin against God? He was good looking. Good looking. And we found out with uh, Rebecca that being in form means he had a nice body. So, you know what that means? The favor of God on us draws demonic attention. Get ready for it. 
and the favor of God comes on us and we're able to do the miracles, that's going to draw the demonic attention. They are going to be attracted to us to try to get us to trip up. Any type of slip up. Just well, We'll talk about it in a minute. But anyway, but Joseph was a man of integrity. Joseph was called to take the mountain for God. He was put through a series of tests. See, these tests, this is what I've learned about God. By studying Abraham and guys like Joseph, you're put through a series of tests to be qualified to be a leader. I'm going to tell you something right now. God intentionally tries to offend you. He does offend you. This is kind of the word picture I saw, you know, when he walks by and he sees like a crack in your sidewalk. He gets up on top of your sidewalk and he jumps up and down on it. <laughs> Until it crushes. You know why? Because if somebody that needs our help is walking on your sidewalk with a crack in it and it breaks, you're going to hurt them. And so if God sees a crack in your sidewalk, he's going to crush you. Intentionally. He's trying to offend you. That's why so many people, they, they ask to get swallowed. I mean, they're asked to swallow this bitter pill and they get that accusation spirit. They're like, how could you let me go through this? And all that, right? But see, these tests, these series of tests that Joseph is asked to, to go through, they qualify him to be second in command. They prepare him to save an entire people from famine. So you don't have any idea what your tests are. You don't understand. You, you don't understand, Andrew, why you're going through this. There may be a guy that comes in here after you get through all this, and you may be the only one that can minister to him because of what you've been through. Same thing with you and you, everybody. You have credibility when you've been through something and you're on the other side and you can help pull them across that chasm where they're going, I just don't understand why you let me, I don't want to talk to you no more. That is bitterness. And you're not going to do anything but just keep going around the mountain. You're not going anywhere until you understand what is going on. But these, these tests... They qualify you. Remember, they build the muscles so that they, they drive the roots down in the ground so when the storm comes, the tree doesn't fall down. Those roots are deep, and it's like, I can take the storm. And it blows and blows and blows, and you're still standing when it's over. That's what all the tests are for, to build your faith. God builds a foundation under you with each trial each trial. But notice this. Who did he say that I'd be sinning against if I lied with you? The, the Potiphar's wife wants him to, to sleep with him. Right. Joseph knows that God is the one who has blessed everything that he's done. And as much as he loves Potiphar, and as much as he probably respects his wife, it's not either one of them that he'd be sinning against as far as he's concerned. It's God. That's powerful right there. When you go to do something wrong, you aren't sinning against that person. You're sinning against God. Mm. No one will see. No one will know. But God is watching. 2 Chronicles 16.9. Boy, I really meditate on this verse. Go to it. I want you to see it. 2 Chronicles 16.9. It's like in the middle right before the Psalms. Now look at this. For the eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth that he may strongly support those whose heart is completely his. 16.9 Does your heart 
fully belong to God? Do you have the 